an interesting development by Canonical as it's positioning Ubuntu inside of Windows more aggressively now. With the introduction of Ubuntu Pro being released for WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, this is a very interesting move and we're going to be getting into why Canonical, the creators of Ubuntu, would want to do this. What's the strategy here and how this affects Linux as it strengthens the Microsoft and Canonical partnership. So first off, for those of you unaware, Ubuntu Pro is an offering by Canonical, which is the corporate company behind Ubuntu and offers a premium subscription version of Ubuntu that's designed for security and long-term maintenance. And it also has enterprise support for enterprises. It's really the same Ubuntu underneath everything, but it has extra services layered on top of it, mainly tailored towards businesses, servers, and regulated industries. As in the Ubuntu Pro documentation, Ubuntu Pro is a comprehensive subscription for open source software security and management running on Ubuntu long-term support. It provides a suite of services, including advanced tooling and optional phone and ticket support to give you confidence in security of Ubuntu infrastructure. And just out, Canonical announces Ubuntu Pro for WSL. So that maintenance and enterprise support for Ubuntu, starting with 24.04 long-term support, will now offer Pro for WSL instances inside of Windows, now marking Linux as enterprise grade inside of the Windows ecosystem, which is a very interesting move by Canonical, as this has the potential of bringing professional or enterprise Linux to millions of Windows users. A lot of us can start guessing why they'd want to do this, of course, as it gains them a, a whole new set of customers. It gives Canonical access to companies that don't actually run Linux desktops, as most businesses do use Windows, laptops and desktops, and not actually Linux desktops. By offering Ubuntu Pro on WSL, Canonical can now sell to Windows only companies and enterprises that never used Ubuntu at all. So today, Canonical announced the general availability of Ubuntu Pro for WSL, which can be installed from the Microsoft Store. Source and beta releases are also on GitHub. And the quote here, Canonical and Microsoft have a fantastic partnership building out the WSL experience. This work will benefit enterprise developers who use WSL to build production Linux solutions from the product manager for WSL at Microsoft. Now it all seems like it's a great thing, at least for Microsoft Windows users. But this also is going to encourage people to stay on Windows instead of using real Linux. WSL lets people use Linux tools without ever installing Linux. And now this Ubuntu Pro is gonna make WSL fully supported, secure, and enterprise ready. This is going to reduce Linux desktop adoption, especially in enterprise, real Linux ecosystem growth, and has the potential of actually funneling users back to Windows. It also gives a little more control to Microsoft as it can dictate the Linux experience on Windows because Canonical and Ubuntu heavily rely on Microsoft's WSL implementation and the provisioning workflows through Microsoft Store, Active Domain, Group Policies, Linux is being mediated through a Windows kernel virtualization and ultimately centralizes Linux around a closed source platform. So this isn't all great news, but as Canonical has released Ubuntu Pro for WSL, and by being able to install it through the Microsoft Store, manage it with Microsoft Tools, and then monitor your systems all through one canonical platform, well, it is a bit of a win for personal users who get it for free and enterprises who can pay for support. So let's talk about Ubuntu Pro for WSL. As it was just released, this GitHub page explains Ubuntu on WSL and Ubuntu Pro for WSL. This is a repo that's been getting updated and they show Ubuntu Pro for WSL here on two separate window applications that automate the attachment of your Ubuntu Pro subscription. So you notice here that Ubuntu Pro pops up and they're able to actually check the Pro status on their instance and show that it's enabled on two separate instances on the same WSL platform. The latest release 1.0.1 .1, is the official release here, which was very recent. And I bet Canonical has really wanted to push this out for a while now, as I'm sure this is going to make a lot of money for them. We're gonna get into how much these things cost, but before we do, if you enjoy videos and breakdowns like this, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Also, apparently YouTube wants us to hype videos now, so hype it up so more people can see it. Let's talk a little bit about why the Microsoft Canonical relationship here worries some people in the Linux community. Microsoft has a long history of being hostile towards Linux. And WSL was really a move to try to make Linux run inside of Windows, not as an alternative, but just to keep people in their closed ecosystem. The subsystem is still controlled by Windows. Also, Microsoft gains influence over how most developers end up using Linux when they use WSL, as Microsoft on WSL controls the execution environment and don't get the offerings like you would with other distributions of choice when selecting 
a Linux distribution and installing it on your own. Cause you got hundreds of choices with Microsoft. You only have the wall garden ones that they offer you, which is only a few. Also Canonical benefits massively and financially through this partnership and offering as it almost feels like Canonical is becoming dependent on Microsoft's platform. If Ubuntu Pro for WSL becomes widely adopted for whatever reason, now Canonical is going to rely even more on Microsoft's ecosystem for revenue. They might even choose to prioritize WSL over improving native Linux experiences. Now, I don't wanna say that they will do that. I'm just suggesting things that can happen. It does also strengthen the Windows lock-in as enterprises now have more support for Linux tools on Windows without actually switching to Linux. Anyways, people worry about Microsoft's deep partnership with the Canonical, which may shift Linux as not being an alternative, but being baked into Windows for people. Anyways, now let's talk about why Canonical would want Ubuntu Pro and specifically on WSL. Well, the subscription here for Ubuntu Pro after just selecting a couple things up above is $500 per year. How does this break down? Well, we'll get into it. But basically, if you wanna get Ubuntu Pro, you can start with a free trial and then set up what your enterprise or corporation actually looks like, which long-term support edition you're using, how many people and what kind of security coverage you need, and then you get a total at the end. These are some massive subscription costs being thrown around. Now the offering for personal use is free up to five machines. This is for personal users. Ubuntu Pro gives you extended security and long-term patch support for free up to five machines again. And it's a way to upgrade your regular Ubuntu to a more enterprise grade security and maintenance scheme. And with costs like this, it's really hard to justify not just upgrading to the latest and greatest long-term support edition on Ubuntu. Now with the announcement of Ubuntu Pro on WSL, they are holding a web event or a webinar. December 3rd, 2025 at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, they're going to walk through what Ubuntu Pro is on WSL, which we've already covered. Ubuntu Pro's enterprise features on WSL, how management compliance are simplified through integrations like Landscape, we'll talk about Landscape in a moment, the benefits of using Ubuntu Pro and licensing models versus free options for personal use. I'll leave a link in the description below if someone wants to check this out. But instead of checking this out, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map if you're ready to level up your Linux experience today, all at SavvyNick.com. Let's move on to how to get started with Ubuntu Pro for WSL. There's already documentation on how to set things up and how to install Pro for WSL and what exactly you'll need. They have this documentation ready to go. Not sure how well it works. I've never bothered to use Ubuntu Pro, although I do have production systems with Ubuntu and Ubuntu Server out in the wild. It does make a lot of sense for enterprises, and we'll see why here in a moment, but basically they run you through exactly how to attach that Pro subscription and then be able to use it on WSL. I'll post a link in the description below as well for those of you using WSL and our administrators. It is an option to definitely take a look at, but I wanna talk about the Ubuntu Pro pricing model. As Ubuntu Pro for personal users are free up to five machines and 50 machines for active Ubuntu community members. But the enterprise is where it gets interesting. WSL is now $25 per workstation per year. With full support, it's $300. AKA you can give Canonical a call and get support for your system $300 a year per workstation. If you want a server with unlimited VMs, it's 500. If you want one with infrastructure support, 1775 a year and 3400 a year for full support. Again, that's one server with unlimited VMs. And here's what you get with all of these different types of support, right? Everything is pretty much the same, but probably the most interesting part is right here. Security patching for Ubuntu Universe repository for 10 years. These are the main apps that come with Ubuntu. They are basically guaranteed for 10 years. So right now that would be 1604 long-term support onwards. 1604 just means a release in 2016 April. So that would be available for security patching all the way up to 2026. And that's why a lot of people tend to get this type of a subscription in order to keep that maintenance up for so many years, a decade. They also get kernel live patching to avoid unscheduled reboots. That just means you can patch your kernel and system without rebooting at all. And some of the other stuff is 
whatever, to be honest. But those are the two big ones that people end up getting it for. You also get, of course, for the Ubuntu main repository for the 10 years as well. But what do you gain with the infrastructure support or the full support? Well, here's what you really get. You get the Ubuntu Assurance Program, support for over 2,300 packages, and support for 23,000 packages if you're on the full support. And then the rest is pretty much the same. You do not get any of these here if you do the self-support model. Now I wanna show you some of the backend stuff, right? So this is an example of Landscape, basically their dashboard system that allows you to see all the instances and devices that you have up and running, where extended service maintenance updates are required, security vulnerabilities may be on all your systems. It is a cool environment to use. I've used this in the past, but you do get Landscape with Pro. Basically, this is Canonical's fleet management and monitoring tool for Ubuntu systems. What does it do? It, it also helps you with remote execution for administering, monitoring alerts, and the newest feature is going to be the WSL management, which will now detect WSL machines, check if they're compliant, enforce security and configuration policies. Landscape is mainly for large corporations, governments, schools, cloud-heavy organizations, companies that have big fleets of Ubuntu Linux installed, and now it's available on WSL. So you can see just how big of a deal Ubuntu Pro for WSL is. As it increases Canonical's overall income, it turns millions of WSL users to potential paying customers, especially if they're working in enterprise. Before, WSL Ubuntu users were just free users outside of Canonical's business model, so it is a very smart move by Canonical to do this. Enterprises will now pay for security and compliance updates and don't even need to run a full fledged Linux desktop or server. It allows Canonical to charge for support for Windows native developers, a whole new instance of recurring business to business revenue. Microsoft also benefits as Windows now becomes even more attractive to developers. They get enterprise security, long-term maintenance and official support if they're using Ubuntu under Windows and overall help strengthen Windows position in these enterprise workplaces. It creates more lock-in in Microsoft's management stack and makes WSL a more appealing environment underneath Windows. So while Canonical earns new users and new enterprise revenue, Microsoft benefits by keeping people on Windows and strengthening its own enterprise ecosystem. So Ubuntu Pro for WSL represents a significant shift in how Linux is used in modern computing on the enterprise side. Clearly, it's giving Canonical new revenue opportunities and helps Microsoft as people can get more locked into their Windows ecosystem, even if they're using Linux. There are risks associated with this, including native Linux adoption, concentrating the influence between Microsoft and Canonical massive enterprise companies. And I'm sure for many in the Linux community, it feels like a step towards a future where Linux is embraced by Windows but doesn't necessarily help Linux at all. In the end, there are many trade-offs here, but I'd like to know what you think about this move from Canonical in the comments section below. You made it to the end of the video. You're a true fan. Make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.